As Mike said, my name is Linda. Um, I'm visiting from Ireland at the moment, so if you don't understand my accent, please, or if I'm not talking clear enough, just give me a shout and let me know. So today we're talking about the foot and the ankle. Um, so the foot and ankle is a complex enough structure. Um, it's made up of 28 bones, believe it or not, and 55 articulations, or basically joinings of the bone, all the bones. And they're interconnected by um, the tendons and the ligaments. Okay? So as you know, bones are what make up our skeletal framework. Um, they've got a, a few different parts of them. Basically, they've got a, a protein called collagen, which makes it, gives it this tensile strength, so the ability to slightly move. Um, and it's got calcium. We all know, you know, boys hold lots of milk, lots of, lots, lots of calcium to your bones, and that gives us its rigidity. Um, so attached to the bones are muscles. Um, and these are usually attached to your tendons, um, and then we've got, so tendons connect the muscle to the bone, whereas ligaments connect uh, bone to bone. And ligaments are basically there for stability. If the, in this case, the foot and the ankle is stability, so we don't have any dysfunction. Okay. So this is a, a model of the of the foot. As I said, there's 28 bones. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, the foot can be um, divided into three different areas. So the hind foot or rear foot, which is made up of bones called the calcaneus and talus. You've got the midfoot, which has the cuboid, and three uh, called cuboid bones. And then you've got the forefoot, which is basically your, your toe bones, they're called the, the metatarsals and the, the phalanges. Okay, so that's just a model there. So as you can see, it's quite, you know, there's lots of different bones and structures going on there. And this is just another view of the uh, aspect of the foot. Okay. Orthotic? Or, uh, yeah? Okay. Okay. 
Right, so you have sort of bone, oh, the base, can't do it no more. the bases of the med tablets here, so they're co coming through, is it? Or the ligaments? Right in here, and I have a slight up in here, and they have to make my um, heart go up to their pulse to try to see what's going on. Right. So it's bad. So I had that surgery after that to get all the bone, because the bone went to the tissue here. Mm. Oh, so you had a few problems. Yeah. Right. Because my feet, I can't go here. Yeah. So you still have the pain after that? Yeah, the pain is at the bottom. Oh. It still bothers me if you put on a round shoe or if I wear the same shoe two days in a row. Uh -huh. You know, the pain is still there, but I'm still not doing it. Right. So you get those sort of calisthenics in it. Calisthenics, yeah. Yeah. They're the metatarsals, yeah. Yeah. Right, and you're getting... Now is in the heart. 
before we get to the top of the foot. And I can't feel my feet too tight. Around the ankles too? My ankles are very bad, but I can't hear anybody touch me with my back leg. So what happens is, because of my bad back, I get pains like sitting back here. And then I start limping like an old lady. So then, when, as soon as I get a certain type of roll that I take, it oh, ruins yeah. me. A lot of times I notice that with people that have some foot pain. So they can kind of yeah. have some foot pain with their feet and yeah. some other back. Sometimes people will use this as like a or outside of arthritis or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Back all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. So, I mean, it takes a skilled diagnostic to really differentiate between yeah. foot pain and the other thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Which one do you use? You know, I got enough of these foot Yeah. yeah. No, that's, no, I think it's the quick fix. Yeah, but no So there, there, there are occasions where it needs surgery for some things, but surgery yeah. is structurally and surgery is structurally correct some things, and surgery is not the most important thing to do for what can cause the pain. Well, what happened to me basically is that actually my feet were congested to something called metatarsal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about that. Let, Linda, just finish just the structure and the, and the anatomy, and she does five reps, and I'll yeah. go back and go to that later. So as we were talking a bit there with, with yourself is uh, about the medial longitudinal arch. So there's, there's three arches in the foot and they basically provide support to the foot. So you've got the medial one here, and that's the curve you see there, the lateral one, and then there's a transverse one across from here. So the medial arch is formed by these, these bones here. So the calcaneus, the talus, the, the cuneiform convictor, and the uh, metatarsal. Okay, so um, the opposite can happen as well. You can have a, a high arch as opposed to so a high arch would be a, a supinated foot. That what, that's what we call it. Whereas a low arch is pronated. So you would have pronated feet or basically flat feet. And um, it is, as we said earlier, it is common enough. Um, I mean, it's, it's very common in infants and children, and then adults are affected by twenty percent. And it's usually asymptomatic. So. I mean, some people have flat feet and they have no problems whatsoever, no pain, no no problems related to it. So in that case, it's, you know, it's fine. Whereas, or some people like yourself will have pain and other difficulties caused by it because the flat foot is, you know, it does cause dysfunction. You've got um, lax ligaments and tendons causing your pressure down, um, causing the feet to be flat. And then you can even get problems, as Mike was saying, everything in the body is connected. If you have flat feet, that can affect your knee, it can affect your hip. Back. So, unless, you know, it can be asymptomatic, but it also can cause a few problems. If, okay. So then we've got the lateral longitudinal arch, which is the other side. 
and this is a lot more stable and, and, and less mobile than the media one. So you don't generally don't have too many problems with this. And it's formed by the bones here, the calcaneus again at the back, which you know that's a big heel bone in case you're you know you're wondering. And um <coughs> you've got your cuboid and then this the, the last um yeah the character. And then you've got your transverse arch. So this is what you know about. So this is the one that gives, as you can see, the, the foot kind of convexity. So this is hot, this is formed by the, the cuboid and the cuneiforms here. Okay. And that gives them um, the sort of supporting most a lot of these arches are supported by the ligaments, the muscles, tendons. The most important one in this is the perineus longus tendon. Comes down and attaches to it here. Okay. So they're the arches. And next, we're just going to talk a bit about the ligaments. So uh, ligaments connect bone to bone, and they provide stability. Okay. The medial ligaments here, you've got three parts of the deltoid. So it's a uh, triangular, what's it on here? Yeah. So the, um, they form a triangular sort of structure. So the three parts there, the tibia navicular, tibia calcaneal, and posterior. Okay. So we've got a few other ligaments. We haven't named them all here. Um, and you've got your lateral ligaments on this side. Um, you've got your, I'll just go through the most important ones, or well, they're all important, but the anterior talofibular is the most commonly injured. So this lig ligament, if you ever hear, I don't know if you ever hear ankle sprains, so if you go over your, your foot like this, so in what's called an E version movement, basically if you think about it, if you go over like this, you can sort of stretch there. So Sports injuries, a lot of people fall like that and they sprain the ligament. And the, H, the anterior talar fibular or the ATFL is usually the first one to, to go in that case because it's one of the weaker ligaments. So that's why it's important, in, as Mike will talk about later on, in preventing injuries to have really strengthen up the muscles around the, the foot so that the ligaments don't grow. That's, uh, and that's a lot of the, the rehab as well between these injuries. Is, Strengthening up the muscles around in the joint so that this doesn't happen again. Okay. So you've got, and then you've got your posterior ligament. So the posterior to the tailor is kind of considered the a lateral ligament as well. And that's a more it's a strong ligament. So you don't see too many injuries to these these ones. Okay. So now onto the sole of the foot. You have kind of have problems as well on the, on the sole of the foot. So there's several layers to the sole of the foot. Um, obviously the first one you've got is your skin and the skin on the sole of the foot is the, the thickest skin in the, in the whole body. Um, and underneath that you've got, so you've got your ligaments and you've got your fascia. As Mike was saying, um, plantar fascia is a sort of supportive, protective structure and it, when it, becomes, it can become inflamed in that case, it's called plantar fasciitis, and that's a, a common source of, of pain on the back of the foot. Um, <clears throat> then on the heel here, you've got a fat pad, and the fat pads are, are found in all sorts of the body, but the one in the heel is, is um, one of the strongest ones because if you think about it, you've got to support whole, all your body weight. So there's a lot of compressive force going through there. So um, with fat pad problems, you can get that, that can be a source of heel pain. So onto the muscles. So the, the muscles of the leg are, are divided into different various compartments. So the anterior muscles will all be down here. Uh, so you've got your tibialis anterior, sensor digitorum, sensor halsus longus. I know very tricky names to remember, but um, basically these, these ones here are involved in bringing the foot up like that. So yeah, it's called dorsi, dorsi flexor. So if you've got weakness in those muscles, then you'll find it hard to do that. You you have problems yeah, lifting the foot. Right. Okay. Right. So the muscles were yeah. were weak. Yeah, it's like okay. Right. Yeah, so 
the fact that you can lift it up a bit means, you know, obviously some of the muscles were affected yeah, and some of them weren't. Yeah, it's funny. It's just like, oh, I don't think that's what I said. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Because um, even, like, the tibialis anterior muscle would be the main uh, one that would go up like that. But, um, <clears throat> like this one here, sensor house is longest, attaches all the way down to the toe. And that's probably what muscle is working there because even though you're, it, it involves bringing the toe up, but with bringing the toe up, that also brings the, the shoulder. You've got your is it? So the posterior compartment, which is at the back of the leg. All these muscles back here. So you've got gastrocnemius. Do you know these yet? That part is the main. Um, right. And does that mean you this would be walking? Do you okay, do you walk with an aid then? Yeah. And did you get physical therapy for that then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it worked for me. <laughs> A little bit of evidence, see what works. Yeah, common injury people put your hand out and it can lead to shoulder problems as well. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so the muscles at the back of the leg then, so um, they're commonly called like the calf muscles, like you remember that instead of these fancy names. They've got your gastrocnemius, which has two heads, which showed up here, and then you've got underneath the soleus, and, and they act to do the opposite, so instead of bringing up, they bring them down. Um, and also a smaller muscle, which is also involved that is the plantar. So these muscles insert into, they kind of conjoin the tendons, and conjoin and come down, um, downwards insert into the Achilles tendon, which you've probably all heard of. Um, and this is the, the thickest, longest tendon in the body. And I'm not sure if Mike's going to be talking about tendon injuries, but it's common you can get tendonitis, it's inflamed. Um, you had that? Yeah. Yeah. Flamed and painful. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they do re resolve themselves. They have kind of different stages of healing, and sometimes it just sorts itself out. And sometimes they can be very tricky to manage. So I guess one thing you can count yourself lucky for. <laughs> And another thing, like these muscles can get very tight, especially if, I'm not sure if you get any sort of tightness or pain in the back of the leg, especially because you can't lift your, your leg up fully, and doing that is what stretches the muscles out. So, that's the Achilles tendon. Right, to help you walk. Yeah. Doesn't work.
Um, intrinsic muscles, so as I said, these are the ones on the, the sole of the foot. So lots of different layers as well, but these muscles we've got are these ones here, the abductor digiti minimi, flexor digitalis brevis, abductor hallucis. And these, as well as they do have, they move the toes and things like that, they also provide a lot of stability to the, to the foot. Um, I think there's four muscular layers in the foot, lots of muscles packed in there. This is just the, just the first, first layer. So. Um, again, people can have problems with, with muscles, and stuff, the intrinsic muscles of the foot. Um, <clears throat> and they help to stabilize the foot as well when you're lifting off on top of a cushion. So, um, oh, I'm missing a slide. Oh, that's okay. Um, so, is there any questions so far on that? That was just basic, you know, structural stuff, anatomy. And then Mike is going to talk about a bit more about. Oh, recording is still on. We have a whole other audience online listening. Oh. Bad enough that I have to hear my voice. Uh, the last thing I want to do is hear it online too now. It's recorded. It's always weird like that. You don't think your voice sounds a certain way and then, then you go record it and you listen to it and you're like, that? I sound like that? I sound that bad? <laughs> so that's yeah, interesting. Uh, I think we're missing a slide, but uh, that's okay. We'll go over it briefly. Uh, it's the different types of foot dysfunction. So here, maybe you guys can look. I'll, I'll give you these this handout anyway, so you can look at it anyway. So a basic type of of ankle dysfunctions, you have uh, ankle fractures. Uh, the most common one is our ankle sprains. Anyway, that's what the one that Linda was talking about when I'm sure you've experienced it too when you're walking and just your ankle buckles on you, turns in on you, and then you get all that pain on the outside of your ankle and it starts swelling up. So that's that's probably, I'd say, 75% of all ankle injuries problem involves involves ankle sprains like that. Um, fractures, most common fracture is a continuation of that ankle sprain. So if it's a really bad ankle sprain and you really turn your foot inwards enough, you'll actually cause a fracture of the bone above or the foot, the part of the, the bone that includes the foot there too. Um, that's another pretty common common uh, injury. If the fracture is bad enough, sometimes people have to go in for surgery and that's when they have hardware put in, where they put in uh, um, a plate and screws to hold that, that ankle in place. So whatever you do, try to avoid that one as much as possible if you want to be a bionic, bionic woman or man uh, with, with pins and plates. And <laughs> Yeah, but not the, that kind of bionic. Bion. You don't want to, you want to avoid those. Um, other other conditions: Achilles tendonitis, like Linda spoke about. Also, very common people that are very flat-footed or have high arches are more prone to, to having those type of injuries. Just because our foot should be aligned in a neutral position. So anytime our foot, instead of being neutral like this, where you're putting most of the pressure through your heel, and then pressure through the balls of your feet. I mean, that's normal foot alignment. You should have a little bit of an arch on the out and a little bit of, more of an arch on the inner part. So if you're not walking that way, what happens is since the Achilles muscle and this Achilles tendon runs straight up and down this way, it should run smoothly up and down as you bend and straighten your foot. If somebody has flat feet, now the ankle, instead of being straight, I'm exaggerating, but it's turned in. Now instead of walking with that tendon going straight up and down, it's got to 
move over to the side, either to the left or the inner part of the ankle. And people that have high arches, you actually end up walking on the outer part of your foot. So again, the tendon starts to get worn out. And over time, if you go to move in a certain way, it becomes irritating, it becomes inflamed, it becomes very warm, and it becomes painful. And like you've experienced, it's, it's hard to walk on, on a foot that has that type of injury. And the Achilles is probably one of, if not the most important, one of the most important uh, structures in the body to be able to be functional. Uh, that's why you know the Greek myth of Achilles, Achilles and his Achilles heel is what, is what you know did him in, because you know in the ancient times and that's what they knew. If you cut your Achilles tendon, there's no way you can walk, and that's what happens when people they they rupture their Achilles. If you rupture that area, there's no way you can walk on that foot. The foot goes limp, and there's no way you can move around in that. So that's probably one of the most important structures to be functional. So I mean the foot is is very very important for a lot of things. Um, other injuries could be um, bunions, the big toe, well, the, or, or hammer toes. Um, those, those are another common things that they've done. And there's really not a whole lot you can do unless there's inflammation there that we can do for inflammation. But to, to help heal something structurally like a bunion where the bone starts growing outwards and you have almost like a, a triangular shaped big toe, is really to remove that bone and to straighten out the, the toe. And what, the, what they do now, and a lot of women are doing it for cosmetic reasons, because they were so poorly pro, uh, positioned before in really narrow shoes, is that you know, they'll get that bone shaved and they'll have pins and screws put in so that their, their toes are nice, nice and straight. And they've come a long way with, with those type of surgeries too. Before, there used to be um, uh, really long incisions and open incisions where they were, able to, they were able to make an incision on top, on the side, on the bottom, and it just looked horrible. Now they've actually perfected it. They do one on the side. They can do one actually. Yep. So you've had a bunionectomy then. Okay. What they're doing now, instead of doing it on the top, they've actually started doing it on the side. It was harder to do it on the side. Yeah, so, you, this, so, so the scar is less visible that way. So it's a small little incision. They'll open, put in the pins and screws, straighten the, straighten the toe out. Um, how long was the recovery from? Actually, not too bad. Take, take all of that out. You know what it probably was? Right. It was probably a, a fungus that was going on. It's funny, you know, sometimes the medication you know, helps. The clean, the cleaner nails. Yeah. yeah. Glorified uh, manic pedicurist, huh? The paraffin. <laughs> sometimes you wonder what, what you need some of these doctors for. That's what, that's what I tell people. If you're not happy with one thing, you just, you just, that's, that's the beauty of being in America. You can go anywhere and do whatever you want. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to go right around the corner to get better service than some other places that you have to travel much further. Nice 
working on it. But we can just pick them where I'm throwing it from. I can never throw it from this place here. The hook up and then so it gets people going, I know. But yeah, it's good to take care of the original, the root of the problem. And that's that's with anything. That's what I try to encourage people to do. You know, I don't I'd rather people not cover the problem but really reach what what's causing what's causing all of this. And a lot of times see with, with the foot and like what Linda was touching on is that it can affect other body parts too. So if you're not properly aligned with your foot, people end up getting knock knees and I'll show you a picture of that too. What ends up happening is that either their knees become too knocked or they're too too bow legged and you can end up developing arthritis along with that and so that's that's why it's good to I mean if you're not properly aligned wearing some type of orthotic to really put yourself into that position. It you can it avoids conditions like plantar fasciitis fasciitis like we were talk, talking about and inflammation and irritation of that uh, that structure underneath the foot, that's another really common cause of pain. Could be because of radiculopathy from the back. So that's another thing that you have to look at and could be causing that. Yep, referred pain into the leg. It's super important to know what where where the pain is coming from and what's causing it. Um, let me just talk a little bit about the risk factors for foot and ankle dysfunctions. Why why do some people end up getting some problems? Why are more people prone to ankle sprains than other people, or getting plantar fasciitis more than other people, or or um, uh, bunionectomies because of other people? So they're all reasons because of that. Some people have laxity of their ligaments, so ligaments is laxity. And what that means is that their ligaments are just not very strong. People with flat feet, that's, an, that's one of the biggest problems that they have. That ligament, like I talked about before, on the inner part of the arch is just very, very loose. Some people just have loose, loose ligaments. That's why a lot of, a lot of people are double joint or triple jointed because those ligaments are very loose. Now, when it affects the foot, you end up with a dropped, dropped arch or a flat, flat foot, and that causes all those muscles and all those uh, joints and the bones in the foot drop down into it and you end up getting a lot of pain or sometimes uh, develop other conditions because of that. Um, other risk factors, uh, decreased arch, all because of the ligaments. Age and gender, not such much, so much of a factor. Gender maybe a little bit, just because like we talked about environmental factors. Why, why do you think <laughs> gender may be one of the factors why maybe some gender or one gender may be a little more prone to foot pain than the others. You know, the, these huge six-inch heels and walking, running down uh, Manhattan with with those heels on the pointy toes. A lot of times, a lot of times that does happen. Um, what's What's also not great about uh, wearing very high heels? Not it's not only good for your your ankles. It's not it's not good for your back. It's not good for your knees, especially if you're you're on on them you know, a good portion of the day. So I tell people, and I, I don't mean to discriminate against any you know, women that like wearing high heels and you know fancy shoes. It's fine. Just I tell people, you know, if you're going to work, you know, wear something comfortable getting to work. And when you get to work, when you get to work, if you're there, yeah, where you're not standing most of the day. If you're sitting down, you know, that's fine. You're walking back and forth in the office. It's not a big deal. But if you're walking, if you're doing a lot of you know, exercise, physical work, and moving around, standing on them all day, better to have very comfortable shoe, something that's able to stabilize your foot, something with a very, very low low heel. Um, they're saying, you know, maybe a one-inch heel, a half-inch to one-inch heel. That's why most most shoes are made with a little bit of a, a support in the back, a little bit higher, just to give yourself a little bit more of a cushion for when you're going down. Yeah. Yeah, sneakers, are, I mean, are the best. And if you're doing a lot of walking, that's that's why sneakers are made that way. They're a little thicker in the back just to get a little support to the to the heel because that's the first thing that, that strikes the floor. So you have a little bit more support there. It's absorbing a lot of the shock. And it also holds your foot nice nice and tight inside that area so that you're not going to end up going out of alignment. You're not throwing your foot out of alignment. What's that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, there hasn't been any. 
there haven't been any studies that confirm you know the benefits of it I, I, I explain to people the, the idea behind that I mean when it's when it's rocked like that it takes more a little bit more effort to move with them and it's a, it's, a, it's a weird that's what that's what happens if you're if you have bad or terrible balance it, it may actually be more dangerous for you yeah so right it's better to do more specific exercises than you know wearing a lot of these shoes that they're gonna supposedly help you tone and do this and do that it may actually cause people yeah it may actually cause people to have more problems you end up with with injuries because maybe your balance already isn't that great and you start doing something very uh, very quick or and, and quick movement and you don't realize it and you end up falling or you end up twisting in a certain way so when people ask me about that, I'm like, yeah, it does. It does help maybe tone a little bit because it takes more effort for your muscles to keep you balanced when you have them on. But if you have poor balance already, you know, it's going to make things worse. So exercise, strengthening up those muscles is probably much better than having to keep on. Uh, uh... Oh, okay. We're actually about to wrap up soon anyway. But um, you're very welcome. I hope. It's informative. If you want to take, you can actually take the whole packet with you so that you can take it home and I'll make another copy of this. The brace? Is it a whole boot? Crap in the front. Yeah, that's an AFO, ankle, ankle foot orthotic. It just kept your foot straight without moving. Yeah, it's like a laced up. Yeah, those are usually better. That keeps the ankle nice, nice and tight in there. Yeah, I don't know why they would give it an AFO. Have a great day. Enjoy. Um, and we kind of touched on this anyway, but proper posture. I tell people, just keep yourself in alignment. Basically, when you're walking and when you're standing, the ideal position is to have your ear in line with your shoulder, aligned with your hip. So really, a little bit behind your knee into the ankle. So that there's like this imaginary line that we should all keep ourselves in when we're standing up straight. That's that's really the most important, one of the most important things when you're trying to prevent any type of injury is proper alignment, proper posture. And I always focus people on keeping a good posture and keeping symmetry. Symmetry is a very key word because anything that you're doing symmetrically, you're equally balanced on both sides. Yeah, the uh, osteoporosis, osteopenia. Yeah, that softens the bone, and it, but that will will be caused or will will cause more of that that hump if they're not in, in proper posture. Even if they have the osteoporosis, osteopenia, if they're in a good posture, it's going to be harder for that to cause those structural changes to your spine, to your other structure. So everything that our moms and my mom have told us in the past, you know, keep your, back, your shoulders back, stand up straight. You know what? It's true. The doctor told you that. And you were taking him there. <laughs> See? And, and that, that may have been, been a result of, of, the, of your, your foot alignment, too. One, and that's the foundation. I tell people the feet are the foundation for the entire body. The foundation of a house is not not proper or not structurally sane uh, and sound, the whole house is going to shift. You're going to see cracks, you know, on the, on the walls and the sides. So how important it is from the bottom going up, it's, it's crucial, it's crucial for the whole body. It hurts. It's because your body, you know why? Because your body's not used to it. Right? So I tell people, even if you can, if you can't get into that, that proper form, you know, ears to shoulder to hips, knees to ankles, while you're standing, and I tell people, look at them, look at yourself in the mirror, and try to visualize what that feeling is, what you should be feeling. I tell people, even if you can't get your head that far back, try to at least move into that position when you're standing, when you're walking, when you're sitting. Try to be aware of it. The more you're conscious about it, the less you're going to have your body move into the opposite direction. 
And you'll, I know a lot of people that all we did was make changes in their posture while they're sitting at their computer desk or standing or walking, and it's alleviated a lot of those stresses on their joints, you know, whether the neck or the back. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But, but you know that they recognize that putting in that money, investing that money is worth the, um, the pain and you know, the, the injuries later on that it can cause. So they've proved that. Well, yeah, well, it's better that than being out on workers' comp and having the company you know, lose all, all that all that money and productivity. And, yeah. Yeah. But that's what most companies are doing now. They're, they're hiring physical therapists to come in and just do ergonomic inspections and making sure that everybody's you know sitting and working. Oh, yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> oh, they'd rather you get to that. More and more people need it. Same. Yeah. Well, well, who else more than anyone else would know, you know, the benefits of doing that instead of having to take their own product later on. <laughs> so let me just show quickly this. I mean, this is this is basically what I tell people. This is where most of the pressure should be. So this is an unaligned foot. This is a properly aligned foot here, just to show them the picture. So most of the pressure should be on the balls of your feet, a little bit on the outside of the foot, and then a lot of it on, on the heel, where a lot of that fat pad is, where we can absorb, absorb more of that, that, uh, that pain. Um, this is not, I don't know why that's showing up, but I want to just close that. Yeah, so the one on the left, a lot of people that have high arches, their foot will look like this. For yours and probably mine, mine are just as, as flat too, and I wear orthotics for it. It'll be all red right in here. So that part of the foot will probably be red, and the opposite side will probably be a little bit whiter this way, which is not a balanced foot at all. And we're not, we're not structurally made to have a foot, foot like that. Right, on both both feet you mean or, or is it just on the one? Right. So did the doctor tell you anything about that or no. It's just it's just some, some people do. That's that's what we're not we're not we're not symmetrical a hundred percent. One one area can cause and that's and that's another um risk factor of you know injuries in the future because we're not sometimes structurally made perfectly on both sides. And when you're not symmetrical when you're off on on one side versus the other, you end up with, with some injuries in the future. Um, this is what happens over time, structurally, with people that have improperly aligned feet. Like it shows here, if you're not properly aligned, look at what happens to the knees. Yeah, so that's people people with, with flat feet. Their knees end up turning in this way a lot of times. Somebody that same person, properly aligned aligned knee, a uh, properly uh, supported feet will help improve a little bit more of the alignment of the foot. So that's why it's good that you end up getting that, that orthotic and slip in inside the shoe because the support underneath really does help and it prevents a lot of injuries. Um, so what happens if you have a condition like that, like the one that you have where there's a lot of inflammation, there's a lot of tenderness, or even you have an ankle ankle sprain or, ten, or uh, Achilles tendonitis, what's the first thing you think you should and there's some certain steps to take, but the first thing is always the most important. Right? That's one. It's it's a four-step program in this in this one move in this one uh, um, activity. Elevation. Rest. So not really putting a lot of pressure through it. Compression and ice. Rice. R I C E. Ice. Ice is ice. You know, people don't realize the benefits of of ice as far as in inflammatory response to the body. 
So when really what happens when there's an inflammation in the foot, when you have an injury, the body, of course, wants to protect that area. So what it does, it sends blood to that area to try to repair whatever injury is happening right away. Uh, but what also happens is uh, to prevent more movement in that joint or in that area, it causes swelling. So there's a lot of that fluid that builds up in that area, and that's a protective mechanism for the foot so that you're not moving it as much, so you're keeping that ankle uh, steady. To prevent more injury, because there's this rapid response of heat, and the heat inside that structure actually causes more structural damage. So the cells start to become damaged because it's an excessive amount of heat. So the ice, for one thing, what it does, it helps cool down the area. So it decreases that chemical reaction because chemicals react quicker with heat. So if there's an injury there, they react quicker with heat. They start to break down. They start to become more injured that way. So the ice will actually cool down the area. It will decrease the swelling because uh, once it cools down, the structures become smaller. They don't become inflated. And then you open up the capillary. You open up a lot of the vascularity around that area, and you allow new blood into the area, and you kind of bring the older blood out. So your circulation improves when you have that blood in there that ice over that area decreases the swelling, doesn't really strangulate all the blood structures in that area. Elevating it, again, brings all that swelling back into the circulatory system. And compression also, again, pushes a lot of that swelling back in. Uh, anytime you have any swelling and inflammation, tenderness to a certain area, still means that it's warm, it's still inflamed, and you have to really continue using the ice in that area. If it's painful, if it's swollen, if it's warm to touch, those are the indicative factors of using an anti-inflammatory like ice. The doctor may prescribe to you, you know, anti-inflammatories like naproxen, um, you know, ibuprofen. Those are good for, for over-the-counter. If, if your doctor's OK with you using things like that, like Aleve is a naproxen, really. Ad, Advil is ibuprofen. If they're, they're just a generic name for that manufacturer. But if you have an injury right away, rice, rest, ice, compression, and elevation, and taking those anti-inflammatories right away, actually help calm down that, that type of injury. So if there's a, a really bad injury, it prevents it from becoming an even worse injury after that. And then um, using a brace, just like you've used, will hold that structure in place so that once the inflammation calms down, there's still an injury there. So there's still a torn ligament, store mus a torn muscle, but now you have to really brace it to make sure that it doesn't get worse. So you're allowing the body to Heal it. So using an ankle brace for an ankle injury will help hold that joint in place so now the body is able to, to reheal itself and you're not putting more pressure on areas and you're still able to be functional, still able to go to work, still able to do your day-to-day -day activities. Without it, it's going to be a lot harder to do that. So that's why all these things are, are meant to, um, to facilitate the use of, of that particular part, uh, particular part of the body. Now, the body eventually will heal itself if you do absolutely nothing. The body will eventually heal itself, but it will take a lot longer. So these steps are to help decrease the time of healing. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's a very slow pr progress. So that's why, you know, with physical therapy, that's one of the things that we do is really not go against the body. We just, we're just assisting to help heal somebody quicker using their own body to, to heal themselves. So bringing, again, um, modalities to help bring circulation to a certain area, loosen up the muscles to again allow blood flow to that to that one spot so that the body heals itself. You know, that's that's one of the, one of the best things, and we can assist along the way using braces, using maybe even to the anti-inflammatories, the ice, and so forth when we're doing that. Um, in those extreme cases where surgery is needed, you know sometimes it's absolutely needed. You know if you have a complete tear of a ligament or or uh, of a structure in, inside the foot, sometimes the only thing you do is really to go in there surgically, repair that area, and then hopefully that problem will go away. Ankle fusion uh, for people that have chronic arthritis, and there's absolutely nothing that can be done for that. Sometimes we'll get relief from ankle fusion where they'll fuse a particular joint that has the arthritis. Um, I talked about the ankle fracture. Uh, if there's an ankle fracture and there's a, it's dislocated, the doctor may want to do an ORAF open reduction, internal fixation, plate in the screws just to hold it in place, or else the bone won't grow properly, and you'll end up with a lot more of, of a deformity. Tendon repairs and bunionectomy, which you all know about, just shaving off some of that 
outer aspect of the foot or of the big toe and straightening out the toe when you pinch and screws. Um, before, before surgery, I tell people one of the most important things, if you decide to go in for surgery, make sure that joint is as flexible as possible. Make sure the foot is as, as flexible as possible, that the, the muscles in that area, the tendons are as loose so that you won't have to worry about the swelling and the inflammation after surgery, which will make it a lot harder to start moving. So the better you are before going into surgery, the better the recovery out of surgery. So increasing the flexibility is the priority, decreasing the swelling, and also building up the muscle strength around that area before the surgery. Same thing after surgery. You want to increase the flexibility and help with the, with the, help with the swelling, the inflammation, and strengthen up the muscles. Uh, maybe Linda can show just a couple of home exercise programs. So she's going to show you um, a couple of things that we usually prescribe to patients after surgery. It may have been some of the things that they've prescribed to you also, but they're really good to as a starter. So Linda, um, let's bring a chair out. So, yeah. so we're going to start with foot alphabets. Yeah, so you're getting all the muscles to fire while you're doing that. Yep, ankle pumps like that. That's that's good for for inflammation for swelling. It causes it acts like a pump and it brings a lot of the, the fluid back into the circulatory system. So that's a very basic exercise, but very good after, right after surgery, just to get the ankle starting starting to move. Uh, heel raises. Those are good. Those are excellent. Whether you're sitting down, that works one part of the muscle, the soleus. The yeah. yeah. Those are those are really good. And then the standing up one works the bigger muscle, the gastroc. So the really big, thick. I call them the lady muscles. heels yeah and that's the stretch for it so yeah, that this works more on strengthening up the muscle so building up the strength in those in those muscles yep. yeah and balancing right and you work on all those muscles in the ankle and the foot that way it's a good exercise And it's good because you get all even the smaller muscles, the one that Linda talked about inside the foot, the intrinsic muscles. You start grabbing onto the, the floor, you know, without even realizing to keep your balance. So it works those really deep muscles inside the foot a lot more doing that type of exercise. Uh, the calf stretch, you want to show a calf stretch and, and the soleus stretch. So the foot that's being stretched, go ahead, Linda. Yeah, that's good. That's a good exercise to strengthen. It's not. It's not a stretch, but it's a good exercise to strengthen. Yeah, they're they're good too. It's almost like doing a heel raise. Yep. Yeah, that's working the um, soleus muscle, which is the the smaller muscle underneath the, the calf muscle. So you're getting a stretch more in the ankle and maybe to the mid calf area. That's that's a good stretch. Start stretching that way. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that that should be it. That concludes that. Now I still have to get you the the, pa the packet, so I'm gonna print one out for you. So at least you can take it with you in case you need to reference it. Anyway. Okay.
<laughs> yeah, well, well, it's true, but but I, the thing I. Have back surgery or no? I'm sure it was more painful okay. then, too. I've had back pain, back problems since I was 30, 33 years since I had my daughter. I always claimed that she was a big baby and I was small, that she was a daughter. But I knew it wasn't because I was just confused and stuff. I just didn't tell the stuff and put it. So that was one of my problems. I do a lot of strenuous work, so I was like, okay. And sitting too long on the computer, that's really my problem. So, it's, it's just one of those things that, and what I used to do would happen. If I just step my foot like this here, I'll put it this way. I'm glad those days are over. I did that for many years. I go see the floor of the bus, just like movement, and my back will go out. Everything. I've been on disability for one time for two years with my back. I'd say,
That's it. Now I tell people stretch, stretching and exercise will feel good and it'll make you feel better. Yeah.